everybody, I'm Brugly, and since it's Halloween season officially, I decided to throw together 10 of the literal scariest, most uncanny, most unsettling backrooms levels that I've gone over. These will keep you up at night, which isn't good if you want to, you know, play this while you're sleeping, but I personally love this time of year, and I love the back rooms of this time of year as well, so if you do too, leave a comment telling me which level in this video scares you the most, and whichever one I agree with, I'll heart. It's that simple. Thank y'all for your support. Without further ado, sit back and relax, and get ready to be utterly terrified. Man, I love this time of year, bro. That's the best. So, Backrooms level 33.3 is a sub-level of its parent level 33. Now, I have gone over level 33 in another video, but in case you haven't heard of it, or if you're new here or something, it's pretty much just a crusty, flooded, abandoned mall. But this sub-level is part of that giant mall complex. The sub-level has been given a Class 5E difficulty rating, meaning that there's a dangerous and hazardous environment, and that you'll encounter many things that don't make any sense. The level resembles an old abandoned mall, but it's not really to the extent of decay that its regular parent level is. This sublevel is more just empty, not necessarily overgrown and flooded. It actually looks to be an abandoned mall from the country of Croatia, specifically, because we think it's Croatia because there are stores like Spar and Mueller here. We don't know, could be a guess. There are also a few empty markets and fish markets and that kind of thing in the level 2, which is different from its parent level. The level has been split up into four sections as of right now, and I'm gonna hop into those explanations right now, I guess. The first one is the main area, or the main hall. This is where most of the shops and the staircases and the hallways are, and this is the central location for this sublevel. You can only go up or down from here, you're just right in the middle on this main hall. Now, if you remember, the name of the level is the Dusty Mall Depths, and that's because on this level, there is an enigmatic type of dust that inhabits it, that floats around, that's over everything. I'm going to get into all that in its properties and stuff later in the entity portion, but just know that it's very dangerous. But here in this main hall, there is a moderate amount of that dust all over the surfaces and in the air. An estimated 50-ish percent or so of the air is filled with dust. And again, you'll know what that means later. But another strange quirk here in this level is that there is a lack of good gravity throughout this mall, meaning that you'll have the ability to leap and jump around easily and kind of just swim through the air like you'd be on a planet or the moon or something. The main level 33 doesn't have this effect, so it's really unknown how it's centralized to this sublevel. I don't know, man, the back room is weird. Don't ask me. The second section of this level is known as the second floor, where many of the smaller shops and offices and hallways are located. This part feels more liminal and empty and darker, almost as if it's like a transitional place that you've been trapped in. There are several big bathroom complexes here, as well as closets and offices, and everything here has this layer of dust and emptiness over it all. Now, on the far wall of this second floor, there is a large spiral staircase that goes up and down. This staircase is very enigmatic and is surrounded and shrouded in mystery. Some people think it's just an infinite staircase, some people think it's the way out of the back rooms, some people think it just doesn't do anything, it's just a staircase. We don't know. Now on the second floor, the dust content is surprisingly low. There's only about 20% in the air that has dust, but that does mean that it's about twice as safe as the first floor. The third section of the level is thought to be underground, like a basement type area. This is where it gets crazy because there is more dust and debris in the air. It's also where there are parking garages located, as well as meat markets and other shops. The entire vibe here is darker and dingier and just more quiet and empty. This section does, like I said, have the highest dust concentration and pretty much all the air here is very infected with it, making it hard to breathe and even harder to think clearly. There's just so much dirt and dust and abandonment that it's just, it's not recommended to come down here or to this level, to be honest, but if you're gonna be here, don't go to this part of it. It's very dangerous unless you have a gas mask. Also, the gravity here in this basement area is pretty normal, which is weird because everywhere else, it's not normal. I don't know. Now, there is actually a final floor and it's not really a floor, it's more of an outdoor area. And this is the fourth zone. 
It's accessed from randomly appearing exits throughout the level, and it takes the appearance of a small outdoor mall type place with coffee carts and shops, and it's very eerie and empty, and it just looks like it's fake because it's so perfect. There's been a few reports of facelings walking around out here, which is the first sighting of an entity you might see, besides the dust. This place is actually the least polluted area in the level because there's barely dust in the outside. Uh, there is still some. You don't get off the hook that easy, let me tell you, but it's way better than being inside, trust me. Gravity is also normal here, so no jumping around for you. So this whole time, I've been yapping about gravity being different and dust being everywhere, and I'm sure you're wondering why those things even matter. Let me explain. So gravity being different across the different parts of the level is a very strange, unknown, enigmatic thing that we don't understand. It's significantly reduced across this level compared to normal gravity from other levels in real life, and it's been noted that when you jump around and you know fly through the air, it's less of flying through the air and more of swimming through the air. And people say it's harder to swim through the air here than it is to swim through water. Now this might mean that the strands of reality or the atmosphere here is harder or deeper or thicker than normal reality. Who knows? Maybe that's why the dust sticks there too. We don't know. But this gravity and thick atmosphere might give wanderers sickness and shortness of breath and exhaustion and dizziness and that kind of thing. Just pretend the sky above you is like dense and thick. That's what this is. Now as for the dust that's on the surfaces in the level and floating around in the air, this is where the level gets that class 5e difficulty from. The dust particles are strangely thick and they just hang and stay in the air. Like I said, it could be because the air is thicker, or it could be because the dust itself is more of an entity that can do what it wants. But if you do inhale or come into contact with this dust, this can lead to a host of different problems. Inhaling the dust can lead to internal bleeding, choking, gagging, acid reflux, and combustion of one's stomach and internal organs. Yeah, that's awesome. Yay, woo woo! And depending on how long a wanderer stays here and how much dust they inhale, uh, your organs could literally get so infected and your insides could get so infected from this dust that you could literally just turn into dust yourself. But it is for this reason that it's not recommended to come to this level under any circumstance. Unless you want to become like a stuffed teddy bear, but with dust. Now it seems as if the dust spreads inside of people like a bacteria in a way. Each particle splitting and multiplying in seconds, almost like it's a live virus and not dust. It also seems to be sentient because like I said, it attacks different organs and systems in the body like it knows where they're at and it goes for them. So it's definitely not normal dust. We just call it that because it looks like it is. Who knows? The leading theory is that it's sentient and it's some kind of hive mind and that's why you should not breathe it in. Now, as far as actual like flesh and blood entities, there are a few normal ones like facelings and hounds and skin stealers and smilers, like one or two of those. But these entities are also infected and susceptible to the dust and can suffer the same fate as people who stay here for too long, which is pretty weird because most of the time entities are impervious and invincible to the levels that they stay in. I don't know, I guess the backrooms has had enough of everybody. Especially Smilers, they look weird. To enter this level, you have to be wandering in level 33, the main part, until you get too deep and too far in, and then you'll end up transitioning into the sub-level before you can even turn around and leave. To exit, you have to find a hallway back to level 33. You can't go back the way you came. It disappears, you can't see it. You have to find a new one. Or you can find a door labeled security. And if this door labeled security gets opened, it should take you to level 81. But the time you're here looking for an exit, try not to breathe in as much as you can, because if you do, you'll be filled with dust and all of your organs will be attacked and you'll just become one big dust bunny thing. Level 68 of the backrooms is classified as a class 3 difficulty and is very unsafe and very unsecure. But it has a low entity count, but it's not the entities that you should be worrying about. The level itself seems to take the appearance of a massive movie theater that sprawls out for a long while. It's just one massive complex with different parts of that same theater. The entire level doesn't feel like a theater though, it almost feels organic. Like it's alive or like it's an organism that you're walking around inside. There's things like fungus and grass that grow up in the darker hallways and mushrooms sprout from random areas as well. 
There are also corridors and hallways and rooms that intersect to this massive theater, and they all lead back to this one large theater room. Now, the room is full of theater-style seating and chairs, all made out of a reddish, dark gray fabric. And at first glance, it seems pretty innocuous, pretty normal, until you examine it closer. You see, these seats seem to be coated in some kind of saliva material, making them a gross and sticky mess. Now, despite them obviously being a soggy, disgusting, nasty chair, they seem to draw people in and lure them to sit down on top of them. Like, even though it looks disgusting, you want to sit down. It's almost this irresistible urge. And when wanderers do sit down, they describe the chairs as being abnormally comfortable. Like, more so than any other chair they ever sat in, this is the most comfortable, even though you're sitting in a soggy chair. You see, once all the people inside the theater are seated in a chair or they choose to sit down, the chairs themselves seem to release some type of chemical enzyme into the fabric of the chair and the saliva that's coating it. This enzyme has one function and one function only, to rapidly the skin of the thing sitting on top of it, which is, you know, just great as it is, but it doesn't just stop there. The enzyme melts and re-solidifies clothing and skin to the chair fabric itself, virtually fusing the skin of the thing sitting in the chair to the fabric of the seat that it's sitting in, causing whoever's sitting down to melt directly to the chair and be unable to move. Nice. Now, while this is happening, the victim doesn't really seem to notice anything, and they're distracted by something else. There's a ton of theories on what distracts people. Some think it's a pheromone or an enzyme, something you're just losing your mind. I don't know. Now, once you're successfully melted directly to the chair, the screen at the front of the theater will start to play a movie. How nice. The films that are played here are random and they don't seem to correlate at all with anything from real life. There's not been one single movie that's known. Now, it's unknown if the backrooms itself made these movies, or if somehow they're being played from an alternate reality that's like Earth. We just don't know. But the movies do tend to be really gory and really graphic, and wanderers are just physically stuck in the chair watching this gory graphic movie, unable to move, and unable to run away. Hey, did I mention they're melted to the chair? Once the movie that's playing ends and the credits roll, the people who are stuck inside of the chairs start to shake and convulse violently, eventually succumbing to the shaking. Think of the scenes from Stranger Things season three where the victims start shaking and then they turn to that jelly looking stuff and you've seen that before. That's kind of what happens here. Anyways, you're no longer there, if you know what I'm saying, after the credits roll of the movie. The chair you were sitting in will then break down the tissue and dissolve it via digestive enzymes. Uh, but, you know, it doesn't stop there because this level just doesn't know how to. Surprise! After the flesh is broken down by the chairs, it will then be sucked into the chairs uh, to never be seen again. Almost as if it's consuming you for lunch or dinner or breakfast. It's consuming you. The chairs are eating you, which is not very fun. I gotta say, it doesn't, doesn't sound too good. Now, the reason this level is so scary, besides being melted to a chair and digested by it, is that from a quick glance, it seems like a safe theater level. You know, there are several safe theater levels scattered throughout the back rooms, and many of them play as sort of a home base for wanderers or a destination for them to get to because they're so safe. So victims of this level might think that they found one of those safer levels when they get sent here, only to sit down and realize that they've walked into their own grave. Now, survivors of this level are few and far between, since the level can somehow warp your mind into this false sense of security. It seems that the only way that people make it out alive is they somehow notice what's happening before the chairs release that enzyme to you and consume you. Now, if you can get out of there before then, you'll be okay. Now, I bet you're asking, if I do get out of the chair fast enough, if I do, you know, it's luck, where do you go to exit? You know, how do I escape? I don't know what I'm doing. I was, I was trying to segue this into the exit portion. Well, let's just go to it. So to enter the level, you have to walk into a theater on level 11, and you seemingly have a random chance to be sent here just completely random, you could be on level 11 chilling, and you'll be sent here. 
Which again, is terrifying, because level 11 is a widely known safe level, and the fact that you could be sent here from a safe level to be digested by a chair is pretty scary. Now to exit, you have to get up before you get stuck and run to the movie screen at the very front of the theater and then proceed to no clip into it. Or you could also run into a hallway that's here and find a door that looks like this to be sent to level 74. Either way, you gotta get out. And the only way to notice what's happening before it's too late is if you sit down and you start to feel your arms getting sticky and harder to move and you kind of get uncomfortable. Now this happens randomly because like I said, most people who sit here think it's really comfortable and really relaxing. And this mainly only happens to people that are wearing short sleeve shirts since their skin is touching the seat directly. So if you're wearing a hoodie or something, you can't feel the fabric of the chair, uh, you're probably going to be consumed by it. Sorry. But if you feel yourself getting stuck to the chair, you gotta get up and run to the screen to get out, or you'll never be seen again. So level 6.1, or the snack rooms, is classified now as a classed unalive zone due to its numerous hazards. But the level is generally still referred to as the snack rooms, even in its devolved state. It used to look like a huge food court area with very liminal features. This ambience of being alone, this feeling of nostalgia, you get exactly what I'm talking about. The food court area spread out for miles and miles, and it was just one continuous hallway full of restaurants and concession stands and vending machines and restrooms and everything like that. There were also other places to get food and water, and it all just felt really safe and really cozy. There were several sitting areas with tables and booths as well, which most of the times were empty, but sometimes sparsely populated. The entire level was so liminal and so relaxing, and it was just a really perfect place to be after escaping level 6, because level 6 is literally one of the worst levels, and a lot of people don't make it out of it. So the snack rooms were a welcomed sight to many a traveler over the years. That is, until the downfall of the snack rooms. So the level, now known as the Fallen Snack Rooms, or the Food Court, is a huge, massive food court that looks like it's been abandoned. The once clean and liminal layout has changed to a layout of decay and destruction. The ceiling is collapsed in in some areas, the stairs are all broken up, the floor is all disgusting, the shelves and the vending machines have been knocked over, and many things are just scattered throughout it. It looks like something's just gone crazy and trashed the place. It also looks like the level was left in a hurry, because there are still meals and food on display. So now instead of being safe and nostalgic and liminal, it's horrifying and empty and liminal. The lights that once lit up this place are mostly blown out, and there are puddles of liquid pain scattered throughout the level. The level itself seems to have become corrupted and volatile over the last year. So what actually happened to this level? How did it end up like this? What's the reasoning? It's been concluded that the snack rooms underwent a spatial tragedy, obviously, and it caused everybody to leave the level quickly, uh, but that does not take a genius to figure out, I'm just stating the obvious. It's important to mention a few things about the level pre-collapse that might make things make more sense. So before all this happened, level 6.1 had a similar effect as level 11 has on its entities and its people. If you don't know, level 11 makes entities docile and not aggressive. Like, it completely calms them down, they're not aggressive, they won't attack you. The snack rooms were similar to this. Entities could walk freely around the level, and they would be completely fine and normal, just like the people were. Until one day, this effect seemingly just stopped working. Out of the blue, it just quit. Which, of course, sent the entities there into an aggressive frenzy. After this event happened, the entities would attack more and more, and they would start chasing people out of the level until the entire place was virtually abandoned, and it caused the people that were still remaining here to hide deep inside of it. There were a few safe spots at first where the lights were left on, and many remaining people were trapped inside and are stranded here, and some say they can still hear the screaming and talking of those trapped people deep inside the snack rooms. Some people also blame this shift in behavior on level 11 itself, and they say that level 11 is what caused these snack rooms to change. Others think it's completely random, but there's even more to the story that many people don't know, but that's what I'm here for. 
So before this shift even happened, and back when the level was 6.1 and it was completely normal, there was one incident of an entity attack. It occurred when a hound entity no-clipped into the snack rooms by complete accident, and for some reason, the entity was not docile or calm due to the normal effect that it gives every entity. It was aggressive, and because of this, it started to chase people and attack everyone on site, which caused panic. This panic became widespread, and people were running around screaming and stuff, but eventually it was dispatched and gotten rid of by the people there. But ever since that date, something has been off about the level. The balance and the force has shifted to say. That single hound entity changed everything somehow, and we literally have no clue how it happened. After the Hound, more and more aggressive entities started to come to this level. It's almost like they're being drawn to it like a moth to a flame, and then eventually it caused everybody to leave and run out, except those that are trapped deep inside of it. Theories. So earlier I briefly mentioned just a couple theories as to what happened, but now I kind of want to dive deeper into them. So the level 11 effect is not really well understood and many people just don't trust it and they don't know how it works. Like how can one level make normally aggressive entities not aggressive? Like how does it work? Where's the science? And if we don't understand how it works, we can't be prepared for when it stops working, which is exactly what happened on level 6.1. No one could have prepared for the effect to stop because they had no idea that it would. That one single hound started a chain of aggression that wiped out an entirely safe level that everyone knew and loved. And like I said, we still just have a couple theories as to why it happened. Was it a change in the level 11 effect itself? Or did whoever controls the back rooms just decide to change it? Or was the level destroyed on purpose for some reason? There are a ton of unanswered questions that we still all have. And now we're just left with this faint memory of what used to be a safe haven level in the back rooms. To enter this level, you can walk into a restaurant on level 11 and you'll have a chance to be sent here each time you do that. So you can just walk into like a restaurant over and over again, I guess, and you'll eventually get sent here. And to exit, you have to find a set of glass doors, walk outside of them, and you'll be sent back to level 11 or you can find a window that's indoors and you can break it, jump through it, and you'll go back to level six, which I wouldn't recommend doing because level six is awful. But I do wanna hear all your theories in the comments about this level. I'm very interested to hear what you have to say. My personal theory is that somehow a shift from level 11 changed the entire vibe and the docile effect somehow, and it caused level six to stop giving that effect off and eventually entities just overtook it. But that still doesn't explain why there are so many entities that are drawn to this level. Is it because there's food here? Is it because there was lots of people they could prey on? We just don't know. So level 78, or the psychological planet, is classified as a class PSI, which means it's gonna be unsafe and unsecure because of the mental hazards and not really because of the environment. There are several levels that are within this classification that I might go over eventually and then combine them all into a series, but this level is the first one I'm going over. Anyways, let's not get sidetracked. The level is not supposed to be entered under any circumstance. I repeat, don't come here, you idiot. And that's just what the first sentence says. Uh, just, I guess you should listen to it. But personally, I think I'm gonna go by myself. The level has been described as a strange and otherworldly grassy planet that is suspended in the middle of an endless blue sky. So think of level 94's grassy hills, except it's not infinite here and there's not houses like that. The level does have very rare suburban style housing though, and the entire place just stretches out for a few miles until it drops off into the infinite blue expanse of the sky. On rare occasions, mushroom-like entities have been reported dotted over the grassy landscape. They might be real, they might not, I'll get into all that later. The thing about this level is that no one has reached the actual end of the grassy plain. People get sidetracked due to the mental effects that it puts you under, and it's really hard to because your surroundings will start to warp. Again, I'll get into that later. So for right now, I'm gonna go over the things that people have for sure seen, and then I'll get into some theories and some other things towards the outer edge of the level. Victims, I mean wanderers, who find themselves inside of the level will spawn outside in the middle of the field, surrounded by itchy, cool grass for as far as they can see. The only noticeable feature around you is in the sky, directly up, and it is this off-putting, smiling orb sun type thing. 
The immediate surroundings of this spawn area feel a lot like those old Windows wallpapers from those really old computers. That's the first thing you really notice is how it looks like that and the sun thing in the sky above you. This piercing, smiling sun never stops staring. It never blinks, it's always there, and it genuinely can terrify you if you let it. In fact, some wanderers just get terrified so much that it fills them with this huge sense of horror that they try to run away. I mean, it's, it's pretty ugly, but at least it's smiling. Whatever you do, do not run away from it, no matter how creeped out you get. If you choose to walk straight and explore the level, then about 6 kilometers or like 3.7 miles into it, these strange artificial suburban houses will begin to pop up and appear in front of you. They look lifeless and fake. Like they're not even in the grass, they're kind of just, they look badly photoshopped there. Around this time, the sun in the sky will begin to randomly clip and appear in different parts of the sky. Even when it disappears, the level stays bright, which means that that's not where the light comes from, even though there's no sun. Anyways, these weird core liminal looking houses are very interesting, and I'm gonna dive into that right now. So if you enter them, they'll be completely empty of furniture and decorations, except for a few photos and pieces of debris on the floor. The photos here all are infected with photoocular scenarisis, which is just a fancy term for the floaters or static vision you can get in real life. These pictures all have that effect when you look at them. When you do look at the pictures and when you're inside the house in real life, random things will begin to pop into your field of view and float around. Now, if you take the photos off of the level with you, this effect will still be with them. This can happen on any level if you look at the pictures. It'll normally manifest itself as bizarre lines of text popping up, or sometimes eyes will pop up, and sometimes eyes with wings, and sometimes other weird mushroom type things will appear. It just depends on where you're at. It doesn't end there though, because looking at the eyes and the text in your photo for longer than a few seconds seem to manifest those lines of text and eyes in real life in front of you. Like the blurry text and the uncanny eyes will spawn right in front of you and they'll all be like staring at you and surrounding you. And a scary thing about the images that you take here is that the effect will continue to work until you leave. And even when you do leave, the effect will still be within the image. For that reason, these pictures are often used as a weapon to fend off entities or people because it would be kind of terrifying to see some guy with a bunch of eyes surrounding him. So you could use it to your benefit or you could just not. Anyways, this effect is the most dangerous part of the level because after a certain time of being here, you'll start to lose the line between what's in the picture and what's in reality, spiraling into this weird core madness of not knowing what's floating in front of you. So about six miles or 12 kilometers into the level is where it ends and it ends up fading into the blue sky. At this point, it's theorized that the ground itself will begin to warp and wave and undulate like it's water. Like every step you take will make massive waves in the grass, causing it to be impossible to keep going. And for this reason, people have never been able to get to the actual edge very easily or at all. We don't know. This waving effect will be extremely disorienting and frightening to people experiencing it, especially if you just took some pictures earlier and went inside the houses and you saw all the eyes and stuff, and now you come outside and you see all the ground waving like water, you probably think you're tripping hard on something. But in this wavy grass part, the eyes and the sun will congregate and stare at you as well. And this is your last chance to escape with even just a drop of your sanity left. Just try to avoid the sun and the eyes staring at you. But now I'm gonna do a little bit of a deeper dive into the weird creatures and entities that live here, even the ones that we aren't sure are real, but people claim to see them. So the Smile Sun is obviously the first. This is the biggest entity on the level. And like I said earlier, it takes the appearance of a large green sun with a very, very off-putting red smile on its front. The entity does not outright attack you, but after a prolonged exposure, it seems to cause your field of view and vision to get more staticky and unstable, and it makes your eyesight worse, eventually just becoming a grainy mess. So it's recommended to not stare at the sun at all. Shrooms. So shrooms are sentient beings that sprout out of the grass and inside of the houses on this level. It's said that staring at the shrooms for long enough will cause them to develop eyes. Once you make eye contact with the eyes, you'll begin to feel the effects of being on shrooms. Like the hallucinogenic, you'll start feeling like that. You'll get dizzy, you'll be confused, you'll not know where you are, your vision will become impaired, and things will start to pop up again. Now, shrooms tend to grow around people on this level who are full of fear, and they kind of seem to be reactive of how your behavior is. So if you're scared, the level knows it. 
the Smile Killer. So this is a very rare creature that exists here. It's been reported as a tall humanoid figure that's almost seven feet tall, and it carries a big knife with it as a weapon. It seems to have the ability to hypnotize those who look at it in its face, kind of like the sun in the sky does, but not really. The entity only appears in the houses on this level, and it can only be seen briefly when the sun in the sky disappears. So when the sun comes back, it'll be gone, but when the sun clips out and goes away, you can see it. And because of this, you never really know where it's at, it could be right behind you, and then the sun will just go away and it'll show up and it can slash you. Really creepy stuff, to be honest. Finally, the eyes. So the eyes are a very common thing on the level, as you've heard. They're in the houses, they're outside, they're on the sun, they're on the mushrooms, they're everywhere. And they are realistic human or animalistic eyes that just pop into your field of view on the level. Some of them are biological, some of them might be in your head, but they solely seem to attack the mental state of those who see them. Which is bad, because everyone in the back rooms already has a bad mental state, this would make it worse. Some eyes have been reported to have these angel wings around them, and it doesn't even look 2D or anything, it looks like a real eye with a real angel wing. It's physically there. The only way to get them to disappear is if you close your eyes, but then again, you can't really go anywhere with your eyes closed all the time, so you're just gonna have to kind of avoid eye contact in order to escape the level. These eyes are a common thing you see in weird core pictures from real life, and it's unknown how or why they appear here in the photos, or in your field of view, or in the sky above you. It's all just a mishmash. We don't know. To enter this level, you have to fall asleep on any backrooms level and then participate in a lucid dream. That's right, you access this level by lucid dreaming, that's the only way to enter. So if you can't lucid dream, you should be good and you'll never get stuck here. But the problem with that is, you're still technically in the level because you can get trapped in it forever, and if you do and you can't escape because the eyes are watching or the sun won't stop looking at you, you'll eventually just fade away and decay in real life because you're mentally stuck in this weird core world. So to make sure that doesn't happen, to exit, you can somehow make it to the edge of the blue sky and the grass and there'll be this door that appears and you can open it up and run through. Or you can just lay down and have a staring contest with that giant sun in the sky and go insane and be consumed by the mushrooms with eyes. It's really your choice. I would choose to leave though, if I were you. The Intoxicated Pools This level is classified as a class 3 survival difficulty and is generally unsafe and unsecure due to a hazardous environment. The level itself is a huge expanse of rooms and hallways that resemble the pool rooms slightly. There's white tiles here and strange staircases, but the obvious difference is the color of the water. Some of the floors under the water are not tile here as well, and they're actually a shaggy carpet, which is an effect similar to level 7's carpet floor at the bottom of its ocean. The size of the sublevel isn't fully known yet, but it's definitely large. Well over a thousand rooms, because people have been exploring and people have gotten lost, and we just have to assume that it's huge. The lighting on this level comes from the widened out windows, just like the regular pool rooms, so that's one thing that they share. The temperature of the water here is pretty much impossible to actually measure, because depending on how close the water is to the windows, the temperature can be vastly different. For example, the closer to the window the water is, the hotter it'll be. So hot to the point where you can't even touch it. And the further away, the more freezing cold it'll be. Now, the water in this level is not actually regular water or almond water, and that's why I did air quotes that you couldn't see. Because this is actually thicker and slimier than both of those. It also can't freeze or boil, despite some of it being blisteringly cold and blisteringly hot. The water itself is also a dark lilac color, and it's been described as a purple goo. It's almost like liquidy jello in consistency. The feeling of this goo is very uncomfortable and it's just not very good to touch and many wanderers have reported getting goosebumps and just feeling very uneasy while being inside of it. It just doesn't feel right. The water is also full of several types of pathogens that carry all sorts of disease and sickness to those who touch it. Especially those who fall in or accidentally dunk their head under water. Because if you do that, the pathogens will go in your nose or ears and get to your brain and respiratory system, causing you to have a hard time breathing and other illnesses as well. In some areas, there are also pieces of fungus and moss that are floating on the surface of this jello water, and it's thought that this fungus and then the pathogens are connected together somehow, and that the purple color of the water has something else to do with it as well. 
Some have also reported strange psychological effects, like wanting to jump into the water, or feeling really dizzy, or obsessed with staying inside of the purple water here. People who do that stuff typically aren't seen again, so don't do that stuff. Many times people will begin to feel obsessed and venture deeper into the sublevel, wanting to get into the water, and once they do, no one ever sees them again. To enter this level, you can no clip on level 58 to have a chance, or you can cause an accident, whatever that means, on level 96 to be sent here as well. And to exit, you have to be very careful because no clipping is thought to take you directly to the void level. So no no clipping here, which of course, if you don't know what the void is, it's pretty much a death sentence. It'll keep you trapped in an infinite dark area forever. So the way that you need to escape is you need to find a dark, small and empty hallway and walk through it until you get to the next level, level 871. Now this is the only way you can make it out of the level alive. So unless you find that hallway, you'll be swimming in purple goo forever and perhaps being absorbed by this purple goo. I mean, it does do weird things to people, so I don't know. Next and finally for this video is level 37.1, or as it's more commonly known, the deep end. So this sublevel is also classified as a class three difficulty, just like the last one, and is unsafe and unsecure due to its environment. Its physical description is very, very similar to the regular pool rooms with the randomly segmented halls and rooms that are full of water. But the main difference in this sublevel, if you couldn't tell by the name, is the sheer depths of the water here and what might lurk inside of them. You see, normal pool rooms hallways can be decently deep, like 10 feet or so, but most of them are just waist deep. These hallways in the deep end can be well over 40 meters deep to the point where you can't even see the bottom of them. It's just a dark abyss under you. And this makes navigating the level really hard since you have to tread water and you can't just walk. You have to just swim through this darkness to get anywhere. Another thing that makes this sublevel difficult is the lack of light. The corridors and hallways here are just pitch black for the most part and can only be lit up by artificial sources like flashlights and phones and whatever else. Now there are some rare cases where the walls themselves have this weird dingy glow, but that doesn't matter much to be honest. The connections from room to room in the deep end are also extremely hard to use because most of them are underwater. Not only are they underwater though, they're very claustrophobic. It's a very tight window to get to the next part. So you can't just walk through from hall to hall to get to the next room. You have to swim in the pitch black in freezing cold water with no light to get to the next area. The level is also not well maintained and clean like the pool rooms is. The regular pool rooms keeps this shiny surface and really sunny, vibrant vibe, and there's no dirt that ever shows. But the tiles and everything here on this level are gross. The water is darker and murky, almost green in some areas, and the air is musty and stale. And it's just a very cold, unpleasant place to find yourself stuck in. The structure and layout of the level can also change very fast while you're exploring sometimes resulting in very confusing and twisted structures and weird hallways that never end. This is due to non-Euclidean geometry, which is just the icing on the cake for this amazingly dangerous level. I mean, I guess it wasn't dangerous enough that it's dark and you can't see anything and you're stuck in water. I guess they just had to make it, you know, non-Euclidean as well. Thanks, backrooms. As far as entities go, there aren't really any that permanently live here. There's only been a few face lanes that have been seen wading through deeper waters far into the level, which is actually pretty scary. And it's actually unknown how they got there, but whatever. There's also been some instances of the Hydrolytus Plague virus, which of course is a very dangerous virus that lurks in water in the backrooms. So be careful if you have to swim here. And there's also been uncorroborated reports of seeing glitchtons in this sublevel. Now glitchtons might be a real entity, they might not be, we don't know. They're kind of like this silent skeleton type entity that's been known to lurk deep in the waters here. Who knows? But overall, this level will really mess with your mind. You know, from the freezing water temperatures to the non-Euclidean layout, to the small claustrophobic and pitch black hallways, to the nasty smell. It just feels like an old forgotten part of the pool rooms that no one was supposed to see, except thousands of you all just did. You're welcome. To enter the level, you have to wander too deep into the pool rooms, and you'll find yourself stuck here with no way to return. And to exit, you gotta get lucky, to be honest. 
One of the ways is to randomly find a water slide in the wall. Jump in that water slide and it'll take you to another sub level, which is level 37.4. It's safer, it's still not safe, but it's safer. Or you can just try to no clip, but that might not work. It's really hard to exit from the deep end, I gotta say. So level 627 of the back rooms is classified as, wait, there's no classification graphic. What do I do now? I guess the video wins here. Let me just make one up real quick. It's classified as a class faded and is moderately difficult due to its environment. And another thing that I'll talk about later. The level takes the appearance of a very small, indestructible room that's made out of porcelain tiles. Think of the tiles in the pool rooms. These are kind of like that. The level is widely known for its dark and strange and depressive energy and vibe that it gives off to people who are stuck here. That feeling seems to come from inside of the walls and in the dark areas of this level, which is not cool at all. The level's actual tiles are just slightly larger than the pool room tiles, and they have more of a bluish hue to them, which means that this level is not a sub-level of the pool rooms. Now, other than the tiles, there's also a few sinks and stalls that have been seen, but uh, that's not the main thing. Inside this level, there is an old 80s style plasma television, but as you can tell, it's no normal TV. No chance. This one is leaking a vibrant, iridescent, static-like substance. It's melting, pretty much. Where its screen used to be is now this flow of static, but I'll talk more on that later. You're gonna wanna stick around for it, it's crazy. So level 627, like many levels of the back rooms, has some strange properties. Specifically, two of them named separation and copying, which both of them are just exactly how their name sounds. So if you get sent here to this level alone, it seems to produce an exact copy of you that follows you around the entire time you're here. It won't say anything, it'll just stand there and watch you. That's called the copying effect. Now, the separation effect happens if you get sent to the level in a group of people. And if you do get sent in a group, if that happens, then you will be separated from the group, and all of you will be sent to your own different copy of level 627. The lighting inside of this small room is pretty limited, since most of it comes from the leaking TV in front of you. But there's also some dingy light source from the ceiling that works sometimes and doesn't work other times. Other amenities in this level include there being drinking water, which can come out of the faucets on this level. That's right, the drinking water works, but the TV is melting. Classic backroom stuff. But to be honest, that's about the only good thing that's here on this level, because the level itself smells like mold and mildew, and it feels stale and disgusting. Now, there's no gross standing water or anything that would give off the smell. It's just that the entire level seems to just emanate that smell. Just nasty rot. Now for the exact layout of the level. The level tends to be consistent and unchanging, which is nice because a lot of levels in the back rooms change their layout or design randomly due to non-Euclidean geometry. So this one stays still, which is good for you to map out and good for you to escape. But when you first get into the level, you'll be at the western side or the western wall, which is just the wall that leads to a hallway that dead ends. Now behind you on the other side of the room is another tiled wall with the mirror and the sink on it where the TV is. Behind that wall is the entrance to a very small crawl space area that's very dark with very bad vibes. The melting TV and the screen and stuff is on the sink wall with the mirror and the TV is plugged directly into an outlet right next to the mirror. It is impossible to unplug this TV no matter how hard you yank on that cord, it will not come out. You can't break it in half, you can't cut it, the cord is impenetrable, and the TV can never be turned off. The ceiling in this level is also very short, and anybody over 6 foot 2 has to crouch and kind of hunch over when they walk, which isn't a problem for me. Anyways, the dark energy and depressive vibe that I talked about earlier comes from the crawlspace area and the walls. Now, it's really concentrated in this crawlspace area, and it's more so than any other place in the level. The area down there is just pitch black and lifeless, and it's dark. You cannot see past your own hand, and you just don't know what's beyond that. You can't tell if there's an entity that lurks down there, or if people are just making it up. Whatever it is, these weird energies and these dark feelings are coming out of this area. Let me know your thoughts on that in the comments below. Now, the mirror above the sink behind the TV also has a few interesting quirks to it. One of them is if you touch it in any way, it'll disappear instantly and reveal an exit behind it. 
but not an exit from the level or anything. You're, you're not that lucky. It's just an exit to another exact copy of this level. It's like room inception. The level will just keep going on and on. Each room's mirror behaves the exact same way. If you walk up to it and touch it, it'll disappear and it'll reveal another room, just like the previous one, right behind it. So most of the rooms are the same, minus the fact that some of the rooms are more full of that liquid static that's coming from the TV than others, or there might be less lighting in different rooms. For example, one of the rooms that you might start in will just have the sink area being filled up by this TV juice, but the other room might have the juice all over the floor or wall. We have no clue how far the rooms expand. It might be infinite. It might not be. We don't know. So now I'm going to dive a little into what this TV staticky liquid might be. Now in the Backrooms canon, it's known as HXMI-12, because that's the text on top of the TV, but its real name is unknown. The static's physical form is a luminescent, light, pinkish, bluish liquid with a syrup-like consistency and texture. The liquid smells like burning plastic and ozone, and it has this really staticky and volatile aura around it. It's made out of what seems to be random chemicals, and it crackles and statics when it leaks more out of the TV. It also rapidly changes colors from pink to blue, and this kind of gives it a strobing effect that can make people sick if they watch it. So watch out for that. Now, if you come into contact with the static, it will instantly cause a harsh burning sensation to occur, almost like you just touched lava or something. Even though it's not hot at all to the touch, it's actually pretty cool, it feels like you're being burned. The burning sensation is not the worst part though, and in fact, it's just the beginning. So if you touch the liquid from this TV, after an unknown period of time, the liquid on your skin will begin to spread and consume and envelop you completely, until you become one with the static liquid and are just a static human like melting into the floor. This liquid leaks more and more from the TV the longer that you're stuck in the level, so the longer you stay, the more likely you are to get the static to touch you. It's kind of like floor is lava. So because of this, you'll need to escape as fast as possible unless you want to turn into a liquid static human monster thing. Now, remember what I said that some of the rooms are coated with more of this liquid static? Yeah, those are the rooms you're going to want to avoid because even touching a wall in that room that's covered in it with just a slight drop will have the same effect. You'll eventually be consumed. And the only way to counteract this melting static is by leaving the level, which I'm going to tell you how to do that right now. Wow, that was a really good segue to the next section. To exit, you have to touch a mirror and jump through it to different rooms until you find one that has a regular TV on the sink. Now, this TV will not be melting, it will not be broken, it will not be whatever. It is a regular looking TV with just random stuff playing on it. Once you find that, you need to run towards it and no clip through it to be sent to the next level. This is the only way you can escape and the only way you can avoid being melted into static. No clipping through walls or floors or anything else has not been proven to work and this is the only way you can do it. So you better hurry up and find it. So to enter the level, for whatever maniac wants to know, you can fall through the floorboards of the attic level to be sent here, or you have a chance to randomly glitch here just from being on level 10. So try to avoid those two levels so you don't get sent here, and so you don't get turned into static. Okay. Also, there's no colonies here, of course. Level 898 of the back rooms is classified as a class variable, and it's due to its safety and entity count and overall just layout being very diverse and very unpredictable at all times. Pretty much the entire level will get more dangerous the longer you stay in it. The level is an incredibly mysterious and unique place, and it takes the appearance of a school. The school is very empty, and it's almost like it's been abandoned or forgotten over the years. You just get that weird barren feeling from it, like nothing's been here forever. Almost like something's over your shoulder watching you at all times. There might be. More on that later, though. The level mainly consists of the school's hallways and classrooms, and the hallways themselves are lined up with lockers on both or one side, depending on where you are. The lockers have a layer of dust, and the entire level has this eerie stillness that cuts through the air. You feel like you have to whisper and not make any noises while walking through it, or something's going to hear you. The only other things besides the hallways here are the classrooms, like I said, and then some few random staircases that'll pop in and out. 
these staircases lead to unknown places for the most part, and it's just a rule of thumb to avoid them. You know, they're dark and they give off this ominous feeling, they smell of mold and rot, and you probably just shouldn't go up or down them unless you have to. So when a wanderer enters these hallways, they'll actually start on a staircase itself, and it has multiple doors to the sides of it. Uh, the only problem is that these doors will not open, and they only go the one way, which is straight ahead of you, and that leads to a hallway, the main hallway. Now, the walls of the level are painted in this crunchy popcorn texture, and the ceiling is a tiled drop ceiling, like most real-life schools are at least in the USA. The lockers along the wall will sometimes have supplies in them, like almond water or food or notebooks or anything like that. And these same supplies can also be found inside of the classrooms in the level as well. There are also whiteboards and a couple of computers and all that kind of stuff in the classrooms as well. And even sometimes you might find a facelin in there studying. But just like the hallways, these rooms tend to have an eerie and empty vibe, and they're so quiet that every noise you make sounds like you're banging on a drum. There are also windows in these classrooms that can open up to the outside of the school. I say outside with air quotes, of course, because you can't actually know what's out there. It seems to be a grass field on all sides, but video recording devices and cameras do not seem to work when trying to photograph or record the outside. We really don't know what's beyond the field. Now, so far, I bet you're thinking that the level sounds really chill, just like, a, you know, all the band in school. How could it be dangerous? Unless you just hate schools. But now I'm going to get into the dangerous part of the level. You're going to want to buckle up because this is where it gets really weird. So when you walk to the end of one of the hallways, specifically the hallway that you start on, a nearly exact copy of that hallway will appear on your left. And on your right, there will be a stairwell, which will go up or down to yet another hallway. So the hallway to your left goes off in a different direction, and it does not loop back to the first hallway that you just came from. So it's not just like this big loop or circle or anything. It is different halls each time you get to the end of that hall. The copy will almost be the exact same, but it'll just slightly be different than before. Each difference is barely noticeable, and it could be as small as like there being one less locker, or a light being out in the ceiling, or a pencil being in the floor, something like that. Anyways, these repeating hallways are very confusing, and will cause wanderers' sanity to slowly break down as they try to remember which way they went, and which way they're going, and if they're going in circles or not. And each time you go down a hallway or a staircase, your mental health and your sanity will get worse and worse and worse. And that's when the level's stages begin. So each new hallway is actually referred to as a loop, even though it's not a loop. And these loops can mess you up pretty bad. Stage one, or the early stage of the level's loop, starts with random pencils appearing on the floor and binders and paper as well. Now, this doesn't seem too weird at first. I mean, you're in a school, there's going to be paper and stuff. But stage two's loops is when you get to the end of that hallway and go on to another hallway, the second copy. This is when clothing and trash cans will start to appear inside of these hallways and it'll become more muddled and jumbled up with junk. The level will then begin to decay more and more and the smell of mold and rot will get stronger and stronger. And you'll start to hear these really strange shuffling noises coming from over your shoulder. Like something's there, but when you turn around, there's nothing behind you. The later stages of the loops here will see the lights flickering and the floor being ripped and there being soggy holes in the ceiling and the ceiling itself will start to collapse and the entities on this level will begin to run around and run right past you and attack you. At this point, you'll feel mentally exhausted and physically as well from walking for so long and the entities can make easy work if you if you're not careful. So yeah, it's right here at this point when the level starts to be more decayed and rotten, the entities themselves will be the same. More dangerous, more decayed, more rotten. When all these entities start coming out, you'll feel like you just need to hide inside of a locker or a classroom. I mean, it seems like a good idea, right? You get in there, you shut the door, nothing can get you. Wrong! In these later stages of the looping halls and the distortion, an infestation event will occur and entities that are rare and unusual will start to appear. I'm not talking about your normal skin stealers or hounds or smilers. They'll be there, but I'm talking about the real dangerous ones that lurk in the depths. Like entity Ariana Membris, or this giant spider thing, lives here as well. And let me tell you, they're dangerous. They're large, seven to eight foot tall arachnid type entities that are extremely fast and agile. 
They seem to live in the ceilings above you, and when this infestation event starts, they drop down and will sprint up and down the hallways and staircases even, looking for food. If you try to hide from them, they'll smell you out, and they'll eventually get you, and there's no point trying to run away, because they're faster. If you jump inside of a locker and hide, you're risking jumping right into a smiler den, since it's pitch black inside the lockers, and the smilers live in pitch black, you can guess how that's going to end for you. So to avoid this infestation and to avoid these crazy hall looping things, you need to get out of the level as fast as you can. To do so, you can find a small vent and crawl through it to get to a crawl space area and you'll be sent to level 19, or you can find a ladder inside the level somewhere and climb it up and you'll get sent out of the level as well. That one's more dangerous though, since you kinda gotta go deeper into the level, I would recommend just using the crawl space exit. Now to enter the level, you can get sent here from level 11 by just going into a schoolhouse, which kinda sucks because Level 11 is a safe level, and the fact that you can get sent to this infinite looping school hallway thing and get chased by giant entities after being stuck for days can really happen. That sucks, to be honest. It really does. So level 899 of the back rooms is classified as a class undetermined since its safety and stability is crumbling. According to the little graphic here, it's, it's crumbling, which just sounds like a ton of fun to me. The level apparently also has inconsistent time fluctuation as well, and it's just highly unadvised to enter level 899. Now, since it's a rather recent discovery, we really don't know much about it to ensure its safety, so take my word for it. Let me do the explaining. Don't go there. The level itself takes the appearance of a long, interconnected subway car system inside of an infinite underground tunnel. The entire level, inside the subway and out, is dark, except there are a few random light panels that can be seen. The level is also fully monochrome and has no color to it, which is very disorienting to people who get stuck here because everything is just dark and you can't really see. It's all grayscale. But the level doesn't just stop with everything there being grayscale. In fact, if you bring anything onto the level itself, that thing will also become grayscale, including clothes and food and anything else. Food you bring here will eventually fade into gray and become lifeless and tasteless and lose its color. And any color on your clothes will also do the same. But as I said, it doesn't just stop at items, it can affect living things as well, like you or entities. Because the longer you stay on this level, you know, walking through these subway carts or walking through the tunnel, the more your skin color will fade away until you ultimately become a gray-colored humanoid thing. This effect will stay with you when you leave the level as well, and uh, as I'm making this video, there is no cure to stop your skin from turning gray. Cool. The length of these subway cars is assumed to be infinite, but that's mainly because no one has found an end or anything like that. And the tunnel that the subway cars are in is also assumed to be infinite. The tunnel itself is a giant architectural wonder, and it's completely straight and goes on in one direction forever. There are like no turns, no curves, no bends, no elevation changes. The entire thing is just flat and straight and is made out of concrete. The state of the subway cars is about the only thing that's different and that changes on the level as some of the cars look older and run down and some look new. On that same note, some of them are also newer models and some of them are also older models, which you'll see why that might happen later on in the video. But this effect is similar to the one on level 61, where the trains on that level are different models and different ages. But these changes in age and appearance have been attributed to those time warping effects that I hinted at earlier and that crumbling stability that I was talking about. Now I'll get into the time warping stuff in a second, but for now I'm going to talk a little bit more about the tunnel. So the tracks that the subway cars are on are made out of metal and concrete, but they show no signs of breaking or cracking, and they actually seem to be very durable, which isn't normal because normally concrete and stuff can crack pretty easily. However, no matter any of this stuff, it is not recommended to step off the subway, because if you do that, a few things will happen. The first thing is that your sanity will drain to really low critical levels. For some reason, being in a dark tunnel with these subway cars flying past you will make you go crazy. Who would have thought? Additionally, the second you step off the car onto the ground of the tunnel, your vision will blacken and you won't be able to see anything. 
and this will obviously send a rush of fear through you and it'll make you freak out because you can't see anything at all. The level's already dark and grayscale as it is, but losing your eyesight would make it that much worse. If you step off the path and subway here, you pretty much lose it. This eyesight losing effect is very similar to the one over on level 668 that I went over a couple months ago. Now on that level, if you step off of the path, you'll lose your eyesight. But in this level, if you step off of the subway, you will lose your eyesight. But I just think it's pretty interesting to see these kinds of parallels and similarities across the different backrooms levels. Maybe one day we'll find out how they do that, how the backrooms does it, but for now, it's just a random, random parallel. The air in the tunnel is also toxic and it smells of decay and old metal and just reeks of rot. And almost everything around you is just wet and just eerie when you're outside of the subway. But now I'm gonna explain the 899 time warping effect, also known as the 899 event. So the 899 event is a time fluctuating anomaly that occurs randomly on this level and as of right now there is no way to predict when it's about to happen or why but when it does happen this is what it looks like when the event begins the gravity of the level inside and outside of the subway cars will start to weaken drastically meaning that small random objects will start to hover and float and then will eventually drop repeatedly floating and dropping as well as this the temperature in the level will go down drastically as well from a stuffy heat to an uncomfortable cold now after a few seconds of this gravity and this temperature change time itself will reverse rewinding all the action that just happened back before it happened at this point your vision will begin to blur as a wanderer and the space around you will start to warp making it hard to see and walk and stand and the air will start to feel like water and you'll begin to swirl and rotate and you really just can't walk straight because the air itself is spinning so you're spinning too at this point the ground seems to start shaking violently like an earthquake and the tunnel that's outside of the subway will start to shift and crack and unlike many other backrooms levels this tunnel does not heal itself when it cracks there's these massive rifts and cracks in the concrete tunnel itself that seem to build on each other each time a time warping event happens leading most people to believe that the level is destined to collapse at any point in time in the near future and it's because of this and all the other effects like blindness and sanity dropping and time warping and all that that it's not a good idea to come to this level But if for some reason you did want to come here, you can enter it by finding a black or white subway car in any level, getting into it, and then you'll be sent here. And this will effectively trap you into the level until you find an exit. Now to exit, you have to travel from subway car to subway car until you eventually get in one that is full of plastic balls from like a ball pit. Once you see that, you have to jump into the pit and then you'll be sent to level 60. Now the problem with this is that it's very rare to find these ball pit cars, so you're just gonna have to keep going and going until you find it, no matter how many time warping effects you have to endure. If you want to get out, that is. You could just want to stay here forever, I guess. The article says there's no entities or life here at all, which might be true, since there's not one officially documented, but the level is brand new and it's been newly discovered, so there is a theory that these weird effects and these weird time warping things and sanity loss and eyesight are all because of some kind of entity that lurks deep in the subway tunnel or follows the subway wherever it goes or something like that. We don't know if that's the case or not, but it definitely is a possibility. So yeah. Level 899, the infinite subway tunnel and subway with strange mental effects and space-time anomalies where you lose your eyesight, your skin color, gravity stops, and time warps. Would you go here? Let me know in the comment section below if you would. Level negative 250 of the backrooms is a very, very deep negative level. And as most of you know that watch my videos, negative levels are very unstable and volatile as it is but the deeper they get and the further from zero they get the worse they become with their environments their features their creatures and and so on that rhyme by the way that's pretty cool so negative 250 is classified as a class not alive wink wink zone due to its numerous hazards 
presence of lethal creatures and entities, and its overall just unstable environment. I apologize for not being able to say D-E-A-T-H in the videos, because I'm already going to be skirting demonetization with this video, so I gotta censor myself where I can, or YouTube will just slap me across the face. Level negative 250 should never be entered intentionally, or accidentally for that matter, just never come here as the majority of people who wander here are never seen again. The level consists of several abandoned sidewalks that sprawl out over a large area. The sidewalks curve around and branch off into thick growths of dark forests, and they'll splinter off even more inside the forest as well. Each of these sidewalks extends out for undetermined lengths, and they also cut into different types of sidewalks. When you get to this level, the first thing you'll notice is that it's got a red coloration to it. You'll also look around and you'll see these randomly put electric poles, and you'll also see the red sky just above you. The red sky has been described as staticky and volatile. It's almost like you're looking at a screen up close. You know how you, when you do that, you can see all like the individual pixels? That's what the sky looks like here. And the forest that's surrounding the sidewalks and the poles is very dark, almost pitch black. And the entire time you're here, you'll get this very unsettled and uneasy feeling from walking around. You can see why the environment's terrifying. At first, you won't feel as if anything's wrong. You don't see any weird creatures, and the sidewalks just seem to be strange, yeah. But to be fair, most of the backrooms is weird, so nothing really is standing out right now. But that all changes a few short moments after entering the level. Because right after you spawn here and you start walking around and observing the surroundings, you'll begin to hear faint rustling in the leaves. The rustling is obvious, since the level is actually pretty quiet beyond that. But once this rustling noise is heard, a wanderer's paranoia and anxiety will skyrocket. You feel like something's moving around every time you move. You feel like something's over your shoulder, in the periphery of your vision. But when you look over there, you won't see anything, and it's just a pretty bad place to be. After a few minutes of this, you'll start to think your mind is playing tricks on you. Continuing along your walk down these dark sidewalks, you might run across a few random buildings and a few abandoned shacks with these alleyway type things sticking out of the trees. These alleyways need to be avoided at all costs, as they're most likely traps for smilers and other entities that lurk in the darkness. Wandering even further into this red hellscape, you might come across the base of one of these electric poles that's sticking up out of the forest. Now, sometimes these poles can be very dangerous because they have exposed wiring just dangling down from them. So if you see some exposed wiring, be sure to avoid that, unless you just enjoy the nice, tingly, warm, fuzzy feeling of being tased by a million tasers. So yeah, avoid that, and also avoid the alleyways like I said, but even the alleyways, the exposed wires, the dark forest, the red sky, none of that is dangerous when it all comes down to it, because the real danger here lies with the creatures themselves inside this level. Of course, the level itself is, you know, scary and dangerous and not safe, and I'll talk more about that later, but the entities here are awful. Entities known as predatory pylons lurk here. Now, you might not know where they're at when you get here because they blend in with the electric poles that are in this level, and they pretty much are indistinguishable from the physical appearance of the pole. They're wiry, they're spindly, but they are flesh and blood creatures, and they can move around the level and crush you underneath their huge bases. They typically move when you're not looking at them, which might account for that rustling noise that you kind of hear when you get here. It could be one of them taking a big step and then stopping by the time you turn around. But these entities are the main reason that you should never, ever stand still in this level at all. Make sure you're always moving around. Make sure you're trying to bob and weave. That way you don't get stepped on. But it's not just these pylon entities that are bad because it gets even worse. Now, this is not in the official page for the level, but there's been unconfirmed reports of strange, large, shadowy creatures swinging and jumping from electric pole to electric pole. These entities are said to be giant humanoid shadow creatures that are only discernible from their eyes that glow in the darkness, and they typically glow pretty bright. The entities are completely silent, and they make zero noise when they swing around, and they attack wanderers by reaching down from the poles with their really long arms, and with one quick, silent motion, they scoop them up to never be seen again. Again, this entity is not confirmed, and it has no official name or classification, but there's been multiple reports, multiple pictures of this entity being talked about, so I'm gonna choose to believe it's real, and I'm gonna choose to warn you about it. Just know that it makes no noise, and it blends in perfectly with the black trees, try to keep your eyes peeled. So besides the strange pole creatures, the shadow entities, the static red sky, the abandoned buildings, the pathways, everything like that, the level also has some non-entity dangers that I hinted at from earlier. Because there's a place deeper down in this level, only accessible through an unknown pathway, 
that's been nicknamed the Cromel River. This is a dark red liquid river that cuts through the forests of the level. A strange misty smoke comes off this river constantly, and the river itself is extremely volatile and toxic to be around, especially to touch the water or breathe in the mist that comes off the top of it. It seems to be similar to the compound from real life, chromochloride, chloride, which is a chemical poison here on Earth. But that doesn't matter because, you know, this isn't real life, it's back rooms. But the main thing you need to know is that this liquid should never be touched, never be jumped in, never be breathed in or anything like that, as the toxins in this chrome compound can get inside your lungs easily. And if you touch it, a series of rashes and bumps and blisters will start to form all over your body until you become this one huge fleshy mess. This one massive growth of pus-filled human flesh. Now, due to this river being so dangerous to be around, it's recommended to never leave the path that you start on, no matter how scary it seems. You gotta keep going. Don't look back. No matter what's behind you, no matter if there's a giant electric pole walking or if there's a shadow creature swinging from pole to pole, never look behind you. So believe it or not, this level is actually a pretty new discovery, and we still don't know much about it, but we already know of several dangers that pose threats to life. So in order to avoid being snatched up by a shadow figure or stepped on by a pole, you're going to have to exit. And you can do so by finding a dumpster in one of those buildings I mentioned earlier and getting into it and trying to escape. But whatever you do when you're here, do not try to no clip through the sidewalks in the level, as it's thought that if you do this, you will get sent to the void as if, you know, it couldn't get any worse. All right, thank you for watching the video. If you did enjoy this over an hour long video, make sure you leave a like. Hope this one didn't get demonetized because YouTube is kind of goofy with these kind of videos sometimes, but nevertheless, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to continue to see videos like this, just turn the post notes on, bruh. It's, it's right there. It's free. You can do it for free. Also, make sure to check out Spoogly, my third channel, and Toogly, my second channel, if you want more content from me. Thank you all so much for all you do. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.